Ladies and gentlemen, adjust your headphones. Come on in and shut the front door. You are welcome to the You Should Know Better podcast. The news from the antagonist shoes. Mike, how are you doing? I see you've got your, uh, <laughs> I see the aircon isn't working in your house. You've got the no, wife no, beater no, on. No, you got the, yeah, you had to put the wife beater on. White shirt. I'm trying to reflect all the heat. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm dark already. So I'm trying to reflect all the heat. Your camera's amazing. I can even see the the, the sweat rolling down your head. <laughs> <laughs> Come off here. <laughs> uh, boy, it's it. a two shower type of day, man. Two showers <clears> in a day. Sort of it is. It's getting hot. It's summer now, isn't it? I can't believe it's June. It's like June. Yeah, yeah. From nowhere, I swear to God. We're nearly so halfway crazy. through the year, isn't it? Nearly halfway. I know, I know. It's been it's been crazy, but you, you're good, yeah? I'm healthy, man. I'm healthy. How are you? Enjoy your bank holiday with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, no, it was a good bank holiday, man. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Probably a bit too much. I'm feeling that's, a bit worse for wear, but... That's it. You got that's it, you got it. it. You only that's live it. once in it, so... Yeah, I, I was working, so I hope you, I hope you enjoyed for me as well. I enjoyed for you. Don't you worry, enjoyed, I enjoyed for it. you. Yeah. That's it. That's a generous <laughs> man. <laughs> I, may, I may need to come and get some money from you, because I think I enjoyed too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think I spent mine and yours, so... Jeez, we had no money to spend. I am. <laughs> we had no money to spend. I was even happy as I work. <laughs> Protection. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got you. Let's jump into the first segment. So it's the undercover gem, sorry, undercover gem segment, mm. where we're going to look at some of the weird and wonderful stories that you may not have seen. So, Mike, I'm going to roll on first. That's Kazakhstan good. man who married ex is open to new things. Married ex, yeah. Kazakhstan, you know what? That's the thing, Borat. Like, like Borat messed up that country in it. So every time what? I think of Kazakhstan, I think it's a madness. Getting <laughs> what the country. You think of that Mankini thing? <laughs> yeah, the, I think about the Mankini thing. The way he, the way he banded with the locals, there, it makes you feel like countries are best. But <laughs> <laughs> he's damaged but, the image. I can't. Lie yeah, he's, he's finished the image. There. I know the foreign minister's up in arms. So he's... <laughs> I don't think that film's allowed in there. Yeah, <laughs> you turn it on, your, your laptop immediately blows up <laughs> if you try and play it there. Barry's ah, uh, he must have. Uh, I hope it's not no bestiality sort of thing like that. No, 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 nothing no. wild like that. No. Married ex, mm-hmm. boy, you wouldn't bring it up if it's nothing wild. So either it's, it's someone that's mad young, if it's not mm-hmm. bestiality, or marry someone that's mad old. It's gonna be an extreme. It's going to be one okay. or the other. So he definitely, he married like a 79 year old. Some, some, he wanted to get in someone's will. So he just mm. married the old thing. And he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, this is me. Just a couple of years. And then he gets the the house and the hut. It's, I like your logic. I mm. like the way, I like the way you, you, you tackled that. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I said, I said it wasn't a, a dog or anything. So yeah, it, can't, yeah. it can't be like that, but it's not correct. It what? is not correct. No, 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 it's not correct. One day no. I'll get one of these right. <laughs> it definitely will, but it's not today. Hey, look, it's not even American news, so I thought you'd be happy. <laughs> yeah, this guy went to Eastern Europe for, for <laughs> your fuckery. Kazakhstan <laughs> uh, is Asia, maybe, but actually borderline. Um, yeah, the Kazakhstani bodybuilder who married mm. a sex doll is now open oh to goodness. new things. Oh Many goodness. new things. Oh my dude, goodness. Dude, dude called Yuri. Yeah. yeah, he married this sex talk and he called her Margot, right, in November. Oh. And he's now saying that, you know, human beings are okay too, but they have to also like his sex doll, isn't it? So you can join into the relationship, but you are, you have to, you know, get immersed with okay. him and the sex doll, isn't it? It's got to be like that, because so he's describing himself as a pansexual, yeah? And he says he can love anything from an image to a soul. Oh, <laughs> so this dude's fall in love with gifts. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's he's he can love anything <laughs> as long as it's an image or a soul he doesn't give a image. damn he'll fall in love with it oh but he's really he's a really popular guy though he's got 110k followers I think G- on Insta what? and he, as I said he got married it wasn't like no, he fancies no, it no no but what 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 respectable priest what minister, or civil yeah. servant is ordaining that please Wait. I think if you got the right amount of potatoes, oh, you could be good with potatoes, this guy. I told you, Warren messed up the country. Look at you. He said potatoes. Yeah, if you got the right bag of potatoes, <laughs> you can bribe anybody over there, boy. So, so I think that's how we got that set up. But anyway, the worst part of the story is, yeah, is that after the, not long after the wedding, he broke it. <laughs> he's he's a bodybuilder. He's, he's, he, broke, he broke the door. Yeah, he was going to have sex. Obviously, things smash. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what? he said he's dumped her now and he's getting he dumped ah oh, this guy he's a criminal he, he broke her back her and left her <laughs> yeah he, he didn't even was, try to repair did he, he try to repair smashed her? His, no 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 he smashed his thing to pieces bro he's a, he's a bodybuilder he's a big guy he's a big guy nah. and uh yeah so he's um he's Jeez. looking for new i think he's looking for new special plastic friends so, so what do you mean yeah. what 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 I don't know. Obviously, I know these plastic dolls can't think, but what future plastic doll? What woman wants to hear that? That's on his CV now. What that, that, he, he, that he, he married to a doll? He married a doll and he, he thrusted the thing into oblivion. <laughs> nah, like, you, you don't date that. Yeah, it doesn't bode well for you it, mentally and physically. You've got to be worried. Nah, yeah, of course. You got to be worried because he's a big dude as well. He's telling so. you that on a second date. Nah, you're leaving. No, you're, you're leaving that date. You're not going to finish your your pina colada. You're out of there, fam. Man, like you already. <laughs> nah, boy, boy. Nah, <laughs> he's, he's a mad guy still. Yuri, if you're out there, you want to come on the show? Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, come through. yeah, come through. We'd bring love to your hear your story. Too. Yeah, yeah, bring, yeah. Bring, bring the followers, your followers too. <laughs> <laughs> we need all the followers we can get. <laughs> bring them through. <laughs> well, the, 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 what I've got for you this week, uh, mm. so the title I've got is California offers people X for getting coronavirus vaccine. So what do you think? California the, specifically. So I know that in America, the state, Mm-hmm. Now I know that Dunkin' Donuts were—they were offering, they were offering like the sugar, the sh- the sugariest donuts. If people are vaccinated, they were lining up around the block. <laughs> <laughs> so no COVID, but diabetes is available. <laughs> diabetes, no problem with that. <laughs> so I don't think it's the same as that. But if a state is offering you something, man, like specific, Gavin Newsom, man, like Gavin Newsom, yeah, he's the governor, isn't he? Yeah. He's the governor. Ah, uh, if he's offering, what's it gonna be? It's got on no, definitely not water bottles or anything like that. They're low on, it can't be drinks neither. That's not going to benefit the host. Um, I don't know, like a break on their hose pack ban or something like that. It must be. <laughs> so they can water their grass. Huh? Yeah, yeah, because I know they're, they're low on water out there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's like a tax rebate. That's what I think. Tax I'm gonna, rebate. Yeah, I'm going to go down that route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's close. Okay. But it's not close enough. It basically, he is basically giving them money. So mm. California is offering people up to 10 people, $1.5 million lottery for getting the virus, for getting the vaccine. Sorry, not the virus. <laughs> the virus. <laughs> the virus. <laughs> Me, I'll go get the virus. This Me, is I'll your go last get the virus. paycheck. Boy. Use this for the funeral expenses. <laughs> Getting the, right, getting the vaccine, one point five million dollars. So ten right. residents of the Sunshine State who have been vaccinated will receive the sum on the fifteenth of June, which is the same date that they plan to reopen everything. Because apparently, okay. there's twelve million people that are eligible but have not yet taken up the vaccine. So right. to put that in context, see. they've got nearly just under forty million uh, population in the in the state. So yeah. This is also a long, they've been doing this for a while, like different sort of cash prizes, it's like 30, 30 people getting 50K in prizes, which could be handed out on the 4th of June. And another 2 million people who will be vaccinated from here on in will get $50 to use in flipping Walmart or some shit. So I just think well, it's incentives though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good incentives, I guess. It, you know, it's good good. In, but it's mad in a country where healthcare is not free. Yeah, but people are so skeptical about the virus. You got me saying it. They're so skeptical about the vaccine. <laughs> They're so skeptical about the, the vaccine that, like, well, they must feel like, well, I need some kind of stimulus because it's not the. I don't think it's what's in the vaccine. If you give them a little push, they'll take it. That means they don't really care about you know what's actually in the vaccine. That means they're like, oh, I can earn this. Okay, then well, I'll course, take it. it you can no earn a million, a one point five million dollars for someone putting aside that you need. Well, you know, well, it depends how you think about it. Well, you need it to reopen the country. Yeah, true. that's what they're using. They're, they're yeah, using yeah, yeah. it as a yardstick to open. If you get the vaccine, you can open the country. So uh, they're providing the vaccine for free. So regardless of your mm. uh, insurance status in the state, everyone gets the vaccine. And now you can get a million on top of that too. So, you know, I just, win, I just think win. it's funny. I just think it's funny because like, imagine in like two months, you break a wrist in America, you go to the, you go to the ED, you want to mm. get your, your wrist sorted and mm. they're charging you the $5,000 there it is. And you're thinking, I want to go back to COVID. I want to go back to COVID. <laughs> yeah. I can get a million dollars for fixing the wrist. <laughs> exactly. I can, I can get paid for having this thing in my arm where you're coming to take all my money. That mental. Is, is mental. mental. It's mental. But that, that's what they got married. That's it's just sad because it just shows. Obviously, I don't know American politics and economics that well, but it just shows the mm. potential that they can, if they want to, 
potentially solve their healthcare issues if they want to. But clearly, if it's not nah, politically there's, there's, motivated... The industry yeah. companies are at play there. There's a reason why mm-hmm. healthcare isn't free. Offering a million dollars. That's a very good big reason. Money, big money to take those. Anyway. Let's move on to the main segment of the pod, the You Should Know Better segment. This is where, in turn, one of us will summarise a news story from the past week and the other has to consider the same news story from the antagonist's shoes and ask themselves, should they have known better? So, Dominic Cummins, man. Dominic Cummins, the former... Well, the chief assistant on the chief of staff. Chief. He was a senior, senior chief advisor. That's what I remember. Him senior as, chief that. advisor, senior chief. What kind of title? Anyway, <laughs> that's what I remember. Are, <laughs> they should it's, make him up. Yeah, right hand man to Boris Johnson during the during his election campaign and also during the the early stages of the country's response to the pandemic. And yeah, he. He went on the offensive last week. I don't know if you, if you saw him. He was at the select committee. He's been grilled for like seven hours. And he told mm. all. He was spilling the flipping tea. Mm-hmm. He spilled the beans, the tea, the whole tray. Everything. Everything, everything was on the floor. Everything got on the floor. He, he a massacre. <laughs> he yeah. was taking shots at everyone. And he specifically took shots at Matt Hancock. Said Matt Hancock lied 15 to 20 times. That's a big mm. thing for... Uh, uh, that's a huge accusation for health secretary during the global pandemic, said that he lied about testing for patients in care homes. Because I remember Matt Hancock came out and said that, you know, we have put a a ring fence or something to use some sort of terminology about care homes when it turns out that he was just sending patients from hospital back to care homes without testing them. So Mm -hmm. you take them from one environment where there's COVID, you send them to another environment where there maybe wasn't COVID with someone who just had COVID. You you, You just got to spread it. Gonna spread, spread it in the yeah. Most Basic vulnerable people science, as well. Science one hundred and one is exactly vulnerable people sitting yeah. ducks for infections, and you also uh, you were talking about testing capacity. Lied about the ability to get testing capacity. Oh, we we this it's just it's just interesting for us as the public because we we lived through this last year and mm. we saw these guys coming up with statements, particularly working in the hospital, seeing them say stuff, but see what's happening on the ground and seeing that the disparity, the mix match, but. Obviously, Dominic Carmen is clearly getting in there early. But that said, obviously, regarding the stuff he said about Matt Hancock, about him lying, I'm going to, Junior, I'm going to put you in the shoes of Mr. Hancock now. I know mm. he said a few things himself, but we're going to go a bit deeper this time. So what, what do you have to say about the accusations that Dominic Cummins said that you lied to the government and you lied to the people of Great Britain? Uh, listen, yeah. Mm. Dominic Cummins is a man who can't be trusted. Okay. Mm. Okay. Have you seen the size of his head? Oh, because he's, he's, he's harboring he's, lies in there. He's, 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 <laughs> well, it's all lies. It's all lies, yeah. It's swelling all with lies. In there, it just floats around in lies. I mean, the dude looks like, oh, fuck, what's his name? Brain from Pinky and the Brain. That's what he looks oh, like. Right. And you know that guy was a schemer as well. So, <laughs> so he's taken after him. Look, everybody knows about Dominic Cummings, right? He's been around for a while. And he is not the best witness to have on your case because we know he's a known liar. The dude said he went to Barnard Castle. I've never even heard of this place. I, I need to Google it because I'm not sure it exists. Mm. But he said he went to Barnard Castle for an eye test. He, he drove, I can't remember how many miles it was, but it was a couple of long miles with his mm. wife and his kid in the back. Who would do that? Who would drive that journey to see if your eyes are okay with a child in the back? It doesn't add up and he's a smart man. So we know he's telling a porky pie here. So why would you sit here and listen to him? He said, what he said was that I should have been sacked 15 to 20 occasions. There was, there was, there was certain occasions where I should have been sacked. When in mm. fact it's him who should have been sacked for the way he was dressed. Looking oh, like a dude. looking like a uni student who's, who's the loan hasn't even dropped yet. That's yeah, what, yeah, white, white shirt, open, open looking, collar. Looking like yeah, you know, the peas haven't landed from the <laughs> from, from the government. So I think we should be pushing the light onto Dominic Cummings and his credibility because he's not very credible. Okay, mm. he lied about the three hundred and fifty million on the side of the bus. Yeah, it's been disproven. He also lied, and I, think, I don't think a lot of people know about this. He was on a campaign against the euro us against the UK joining the Euro back in the 90s. And he had another big slogan. It was like, 
um, drug prices are cost this much and this is how much we're going to lose if we you know, join the euro and stuff like that. And people believed it. We never joined the euro. So he's been around for a while. He's been doing this for a while. So all I have mm. to say is, is he a man that can sit in front of a select committee and be trusted? Who do you trust out of me, my Hancock, or <laughs> Dominic Cummings? <laughs> That's all I have to say on the situation. But I remember, it's interesting you bring up the Barnard Castle thing, but I, I mm. distinctly remember when uh, Dominic Cummins had a lot of heat for that. You, Matt Hancock, yeah. you came out and was defending my man. You, you basically said that you, you... I can't remember the exact words you used, but you definitely came out... <laughs> yeah, me neither. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, but, well, no, nah, at the time, I didn't realise how much of a liar he was. His head oh. hadn't expanded that big. Now, I've seen... I've seen clearly sitting in front of the select committee and he was saying all sorts of wild and outrageous, ostentatious issues about me. And I know they're not true. So I know he's a liar now. So, so okay. So now he's a liar, but before mm. you, you're willing to trust him. So what is it? Why Why do you turn? Why do you turn? You Because I remember we were asked, mm. you were specifically asked if you should criticise him and you failed to criticize the fact that he went on this test so why now why is he a liar now and not a liar then i'll tell you why because the facts have come out okay i had a private investigator recognize why this guy was in durham mm. and it's because he was there flouting the rules and at the time i wasn't sure so i didn't come out and say that but now there's concrete evidence don't ask me to show it because he hasn't showed his yet <laughs> but there's concrete evidence on a whatsapp chat like he went the there. <laughs> he went there to get a Greg's or something like that. <laughs> oh my goodness! The thing is, um, the the funny thing is, with obviously you can stop being Matt Hancock. And yeah. It was a terrible. All you did is say he's a bad person. I'm not a terrible defense. <laughs> like you got to attack his credibility because <laughs> I haven't done been as well. But <laughs> from Green Sill to flipping, yeah, yeah, yeah. The turkey said he said he had um. PP from Turkey didn't exist. Oh, he didn't exist. So the didn't care exist. homes. He I'm in the, the bin. Plane is coming over. Bin. No plane was seen. They're the charter flight. He's a liar. liar. How is the thing is the problem it. is there's no accountability with these lot. Like he obviously Boris Johnson is a mess himself. So you can't look at him to be doing the right thing because he he's a yeah. complete mess. Yeah, himself. rots from the head. Rots from so the, head. the whole thing is a mess. No accountability. No nothing. These man. Get away with murder, literal murder, as I said with Boris last week. These men have presided over tens of thousands of deaths. I think, didn't they come out and say at one point, 20,000 would be a good number? Yeah, well, I mean, they were, they were, they were, uh, they were backtracking on the herd immunity as well. We know that was clearly their policy from the get-go. Mm. And obviously Dominic, Dominic Cummings revealed that, you know. And you, you can tell, like, they're just, like he said, there's no accountability is that Spider-Man mean they're appointing things at each other. Mm. And that's the way politics is. Unless your party votes you out, as in a, a, a notion of a, a vote of no confidence, or you resign, you're not going anywhere because you're only duly held accountable at the polls every five years or whenever the election is. So, you know, who's going to remember this coming the next election? I don't know. No, well, I don't that's, know. That's the job of Labour and Keir Starmer to make us remember. But we it remains to be seen mm. remains to be seen but yeah Matt Hancock is a mess Dominic Cummings is getting in, in there early I respect the tactic I don't respect no, they, him but I respect the tactic they're all we they're all little weasels man like yeah. they're just not none of them come out of any shining glory at the end of this that's, they all just look like they're turning on each other that's what it yeah. looks like yeah 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 exactly so what, what, what have you got for us this week well, wow, it's kind of a sensitive topic, actually. We're mixing sport with mental health. And we're looking at the case of Naomi Osaka. She pulled out of the French Open, citing mental health reasons. So she's been suffering from long bouts of depression since the US Open in 2018. Now, there's been some kind of contrast of how people have reacted to this news. Because on one hand, you've got a lot of athletes coming out and supporting her. Uh, tennis stars such as uh, Serena Williams have come out and they said they want to support her. She wants, said she wants to give her a hug and stuff like that. On the flip side, you've got some other, maybe more senior tennis stars, people, you know, being about in the trenches and, you know, let out of the law. Um, for example, um, former UK one, uh, number one seed, Andrew Castle said, I think she's got this completely wrong. 
in terms of approach to dealing with the whole situation. What year was he number one? 1980s. Right? Bam, you know, I, right. Just, I, think, I think it was the 53. They maybe. dug this guy for the grave for the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, had to, <laughs> they had to find someone to control. The LBC, you know, it's quite easy to get a right wing, to get a right wing on there. But in a statement on uh, on her um, Twitter, she said she's already feeling vulnerable and anxious ahead of the tournament and was withdrawing so that everyone can just go ahead and focus on tennis. But this has actually opened up a conversation about how Tennis stars, sports stars should be able to deal with, you know, credible mental health issues in the face of being in front of the cameras and dealing with uh, the press and the media, you know. And so I kind of, if you're absorbing all of that, I want you to kind of put yourselves in the shoes of, you know, someone on a panel who says, look, you're actually skipping out on your duties, okay, because it's in the contract. You're meant to do these. Mm-hmm. You're meant to do these uh, press briefings, um, but you're not doing them because of mental health issues. Like, right? how are you going to now suggest to the world that she needs to do these, or this is unacceptable and this can't happen again? You're on that panel. Yeah, I'm on the panel. Uh, Roland Garros. Shout out the French. And there we go. They need to look. The prize money for the French Open winner is just under 1.7 million. US dollars. That's more than you get for getting your coronavirus jab in California. It's more yeah, than but, that. Yeah, but <laughs> this one's this one's you actually have to <laughs> practice and this you have to go to the field. This way you just come there with your Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. <laughs> <Get> your do- <laughs> <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts and get your jab. Roll up your sleeves. <laughs> Bro, this one, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. The one point seven million dollar look. Ooh, anyone that comes to the French Open or any mm. tournament on, on the tour, they play a few tennis matches mm. and they speak to the media a little bit. It's just a two week tournament. Then you can go home with a comfy million. So that's the thing mm. I don't understand. Without the media, could we offer such prizes? No. No, the same media that are helping fund such a prize money, the same media she wants to now ignore. Mm. It doesn't make any sense, Naomi. It doesn't make mm. any sense. And the problem is people need to understand when you're training for these tournaments, when you're training to become a tennis superstar, fame is part of the conversation, whether you it's like it or not. Fame is part of it. No one's paying to see some unknown. No one's paying to see Mike Rakadiri at tennis. No one's paying that. No one's paying. I'd pay. That. I'd pay. No I'd, pay. I'd pay to see you against what's that guy, Andrew Castle. Andrew Castle, that guy. They, that guy. They, I should have checked put the back age. In the coffin. They're going to put him back in the coffin. This guy, he's, I know he's, he's buried somewhere. <laughs> Andrew Just Castle. before he catches the virus, he had to come out. Yeah, come out and see But let me tell you. Let me tell you. Don't become famous. Mm. Look. She be, and the funny thing is, it's the fame and dealing with all the anxiety and stuff. She's complaining about mm. it now, but when she wanted Cam for Black Lives Matter to campaign for Black Lives Matter, she knew she wanted the attention. Then she used the same platform and fame that she's now anxious about to promote Black Lives Matter. In her defence, though, was that during a press briefing or was that a display in terms of her actual clothing? Is it... that... She used was... her platform to promote BLM. Did she not? The same platform she's now uh, up, upset about or anxious about or now denouncing. That's yeah, so, so is that during the press briefing is what I'm trying to say? I don't know. Maybe she put a black fist up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> this is the problem with Gen Z. Rubbish. They can't handle it. Gen Z can't handle it. The millennials, mm, and then the baby boomers, us baby boomers can handle it. Gen yeah. Z, I mean, they can't handle it. They need to, they need to get up to speed. Gen Y, big up Gen Y, they can handle the pressure. Roda Federer uh, and all them man there, and Serena Williams. That's it. She needs to look at Serena. She's look at Serena. Serena knows what to do. Serena fair, knows fair, what fair, to do. Fair, fair. So uh, yeah, I think you're talking rubbish though, but it's okay because <laughs> <laughs> because because uh, someone's got to defend that that stance. Uh, well, now, what's actually interesting is because Serena did say you know people deal with it differently. Mm-hmm. which I think is fair enough, right? 100%. And so, as she said, she's been suffering since 2018. You know, I don't know I don't know how she's been coping with it, but she's obviously reached the end of her tether, right? Oh, it must be difficult, man. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, a global co- superstar. Imagine that. Like, obviously, ima- like, obviously, she's been on the scene, so I'm sure in tennis she's been known about, but yeah. to the general public, 
she goes, she wins the tournament at a young age. She's everywhere. Everyone wants a piece of her. Yeah. 2023. Yeah. Young. Like, everyone wants a piece of you. Everyone wants to talk to you. Everyone wants to sign autographs. Like, you go from, I, I don't know her personally, but maybe she's a, 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 shy, a shy young woman. And now you're thrown mm. into the limelight. You, you probably just want to play your tennis and go home. Mm. With your mm. friends. Which you, I mean, she won her last match as well. So it's, yeah. know, it's, not, it's not affecting her game. Mm. She's clearly just not. But the, what I appreciate, she did say before, before the um, game was played and before she knew the result, she said she wasn't going to. Yeah, hundred percent. In the press, she came, so she came it wasn't like she was ducking from like an L and nothing like that, hundred percent, and stuff like that. Hundred percent. No, these guys, are, they, these these guys are too old. They're too ancient. They're too draconian in their ways, and they need to mm. understand that you know some people don't want to speak to the media, and obviously, yeah. it, as you say, it sparks that interesting conversation. If someone doesn't want to speak to the media for their mental health, should they be able to say no? I think they should. I agree. I agree. But then I guess you get down that slippery slope of. Boy, I just lost like I just lost like, I just lost badly, but I, I really trying to do this press conference. Right yeah, you, I mean, you should get one where you can cash in. That, yeah. Like, I'm not talking to you guys because I just lost. I don't even know yeah, on the better off thing. No, that loss was too much. That loss is too much. I'll give me a few yeah. hours at least. That's the thing. Imagine taking a bad loss and put a microphone in your face like yeah, this immediately. Yeah, straight as soon as you, as soon as you lost the match, you go, yes, what happened there? What happened? You got what happened? Up. You, you saw what happened. Don't ask me what happened. You, you were there. Don't ask me questions. You saw the team, fam. What happened? You saw what happened. You're telling me you're the one. You're watching. You're during the assessment. They'll be bringing action replays. What happened here? Yeah. Oh god, if I I'll slap this racket on your head. Yeah, yeah. No, I, def I definitely feel that there should be a compromise where they get like at least one. Where they go, look, not today, boys. Not, <laughs> yeah, you you not saw today. what happened, Fedor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't bring me into this one. So, but yeah, no, it, it, it will, it will definitely spark a conversation. I just wonder where these things will lead. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess, I guess, if this was like maybe four, five, six years ago, mm. I think she would have got lambasted by everyone. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, 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 obviously, there's more of a tolerance. The mood has towards, changed. You know, obviously, yeah. mental health and mental well-being, as they should be. Yeah. And you know, I hope that you know she she gets time to sort of rest and you know think mm. think on her and do the things that you know make her happy. You know. Yeah. So, Naomi, we're here. We're with you. Yeah. Support. Keep playing your games. That's it. Obviously, try and get that coupon in it so you can just dip out of one. Yeah, least. that's it. You need you need, you need the the L coupon. You yeah, need, yeah. The L coupon. Just the, yeah. like, I took an L. Don't bother me. Not today. Not today. What's the name? Subaka. I know that. Yeah, yeah. They, they, need they, need they need to shift. They need to shift. They need to shift. <laughs> All right, let, let's run straight into our throwback segment. This is where yeah. we look back at something that's happened during this week and yesteryear. The week, this week being the week beginning the 31st of May. So, Junior, what have you got for us this week? Uh, I got a uh, throwback that even I, I can't, I forgot about this one because there's been so many. Mm -hmm. 3rd of June, 2017, the London mm. Bridge terrorist attack. I couldn't oh. even, I was thinking there was, there was one in 2019, there was there's been so many now that even myself yeah, scary to say yeah 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 i forgot i even forgot about this but uh there was uh terrorists um they drove a van mm. um on the pedestrian um crossing and the pedestrian um walk like a sidewalk for the americans that you're listening there mm. and they basically crashed it into the south bank of the river thames uh, then after that, they ran into the London um, Bridge Borough Market mm. and they continued to go ahead and stab people in restaurants and pubs, killing A and injuring 48 until Jeez. eventually police were on the scene and, and um, neutralised the attackers. I'm not going to mention the names, so I don't want to give them the credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. But yeah, I mean, yeah, like I was saying, I <clears throat> can't say it can't be too sure where I was this day, but I was probably out and around the city. Because uh, I would have been working around there those times. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It yeah, must yeah, have yeah. just been, it was, it was probably, no, do you know what? Tell a lie, Michael, I remember I was at a wedding. I was at a wedding. wedding. Yeah, I was at a wedding. I was driving back and someone messaged me saying, you okay? And I was like, what? What do you mean? Yeah, and yeah. then I saw the news and I was like, oh okay. God, they thought maybe I was out in the town. Um, but yeah, it was, it was shocking. I, me I remember um, I remember that time when she was, she was trying to see if I was okay. I was like, wow. But yeah, like I was saying, there's so many, and I'm not sure you remember, but um, around May of the same year, 2017, mm. there was the um, Ariana Grande concert oh, when Suicide Bomber Kill 22. Yeah. yeah, so this this period was like a whole yeah, and fear of terrorism. And yeah, I just I just totally forgot about that one. But yeah, 
Uh, no, that it's sad. Favorite. That's why they got the, the barricades up. So when yeah. I walk on Westminster Bridge now, you've got the barricades protecting the pedestrians. So if obviously prevent, obviously, mad men, mad mm. people doing the such the same. But yeah, shout out the victims of that because it's crazy, man. You go, mm. you go out to enjoy a meal, then you get a mad... A mad person, yeah, mad. I don't. I don't like to say mad because I don't want it to be a mental health thing where we say they're insane that they don't know what they're doing. They do know no, what they're they doing. They're they just, weren't mad. Yeah. They're just their ideology sick. That's probably yeah. they're probably a better way. They have a sick ideology which they follow through with. So my throwback uh, is is an attack of some sort, but not such. A, not one with that vim. Uh, the first mm. of June, nineteen seventy. Pr- then Prime Minister, Labour leader Harold Wilson was egged by a young conservative demonstrator. So apparently it was a good shot too. The guy hit him flush on the forehead oh and gosh. the egg drops all, egg over, all over your suit. face. That's it. Apparently it was in response to the fact that the South African cricket tour, remember we talked mm. about a couple of weeks ago, yeah, yeah, was yeah, uh, cancelled. So this young conservative demonstrator did not give a toss about apartheid. He wanted to watch <laughs> yeah. the cricket. He they wanted to watch their game. He wanted to watch the game. He was upset that apartheid got in the way. So apparently Mr. <laughs> Wilson shrugged it off and he said yeah. that eggs must be cheap enough to throw. So, you know, so which is true. Because apparently the Tories were saying that, you know, the Labour are... Uh, Increasing living costs or some rubbish. Oh right, oh I see. Oh okay, okay. I thought, I thought you were saying it like no, no. That's that's what. Rich that's, or something like that. No, no, no. So it just reminds you oh. of obviously when Farage got hit with a milkshake a couple. Yeah, of years ago. yeah. I was just about thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. That's it. He's, 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 <laughs> the guy said to him, "What he got? Why did he stop it?" <laughs> I said, "No, brother. I'm not trying to get in front of that." He <laughs> said, "Why did he stop?" Why do you stop? Is it now, brother? I'm not trying to get in front of that. Like, yeah, a good shot. That one was a good shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what like, do you do? Right, what no, do you what do you no, do? So he, that's because you can't go anywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just the, the whole media following him. That's the one where he, the media instead of letting him take that L, he needed that coupon. Then that yeah, Farage needed that L coupon. That's like, what, what, what happened. happened. <laughs> he just saw her. <laughs> Literally, he needed that L coupon because they hit him. He got hit good. Yeah, uh, he was walking around looking like a mess. And the guy that yeah. threw the milkshake because people obviously people don't like Farage, innit? They backed mm. him. They they go funded me his court costs. <laughs> also, go funded him to buy another milkshake. <laughs> Oh, because he wasted it on that. <laughs> they said that because the contents were absorbed by Farage's <laughs> suit. So they go find him to buy another milkshake. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Bloody garage. <laughs> garage. If that go find me still open, I'll donate too. Yeah, I'll, I, I, may, I may just have to. They hit Tommy Robson as well. He got, he got hit by them as well. Anyway, before yeah. I say anything too mad, isn't it? But mm. I say he deserves more than a milkshake. That is. For sure. But that has been another episode of uh, You Should Know Better. So as we always say at the end of the podcast, have a good week and don't do anything that's going to make us say you should know better. All right. Take care, people.